Next, we are going to look at roots of equations. The roots of quadratic equations and polynomials of the form and polynomials in the form fx equal to 0 can be solved using the following numerical methods. The first method which we are going to see is interpolation and sign change. Already in our first video about numerical methods, we have seen how we can interpolate. If you have not watched the first video, please feel free to look for it here. Second method, we shall have graphical method where we shall have to graph the function, the polynomial effect graph, and where it cuts the x axis. That's where the root lies. If you have the Newton Raphson method, which people call NRM general stroke of simple iteration method. You have trapezium rule. There is repeated bisection. You have now with the dry run performance. We shall be using the flow charts. Now before one can solve the roots of an equation which is in the form f x equal to zero we need to locate we need to locate the root first by using sign change method so the first step there are two methods of locating the root we have sign change graphical method how does sign change work if the root lies between x1 and x2 then f of x1 times f of x2 should be less than zero meaning that f x1 can be positive and f x2 is negative or the reverse is true f x2 can be negative and this becomes a positive or this being a positive and this being a negative that's what it means here let's have an example example one part a show that the roots of the equation x power 3 minus 6 x plus 1 equal to 0 lie in the range negative 3 less or equal to x less or equal to 3 they need us to show that the roots of this equation here lie in the range in this part b using linear interpolation once find the negative now we need to do we need to draw a table but before we draw the table in our solution first of all we have to select fx b equal to zero we know that a zero is a neutral value that lies between positives and so if fx is a negative and we find that another fx is a positive then that simply means that there exists a zero between the two fx's okay that's what sign change here means so let's have uh, that table so we are going to have our values of x and we are going to have fx here I've said that let fx be equal to 0. This implies that fx can as well be equal to, because this function is also equal to 0, so fx can be x power 3 minus 6x plus 1. Our values of x are ranging between negative 3 and positive 3. So here I have negative 3. I'm going to pick on integers, negative 2 negative 1 0 1 then we go ahead and we get f of these values or the function values at this point so put here negative 3 you're going to get negative 8 put here negative 2 put here negative 2 you're going to end up with a positive 5 put here negative 1 you're going to end up with positive 6 put here 0 you put there 0 you end up with a 1 put there 1 you end up with negative 4 put there 2 you are going to end up with negative 3 put there 3 you are going to end up with a 10 now we say that one way of locating the roots is by sign change is by sign change we said that if x1 and x2 
a values such that f of x1 times f of x2 being a negative less than zero means being a negative then we conclude and say that there exists a root between x1 so we look at the f's where we see where we see sign change we make a conclusion and say there exists a root so let's check we have here there is sign change negative positive so when you get f when you get f of negative 3 times f of negative 2 you are going to get negative 40 which is less than 0 this means that there is a root this means that there is a root between negative 2 and negative 3 this means that okay, that's what it means we also make an observation here this is a positive and this is here a negative this also means that since there is a sign change f of 0 times f of 1 this is equal to what is f0 f0 is 1 times f of 1 is negative 4 you can see that this is giving us negative 4 which is less than 0 meaning that there is a root that exists between 0 and 1 0 and 1 there is also another sign change here there is also another sign change there so when you get f of 2 times f of 3 we are going to get negative 3 times a 10 which is negative 30 and negative 30 is less than 0 meaning that meaning that a root exists between 2 and 3 now we say that when f of x is equal to 0 this x here must be the root so in the case there is sign change changing from positive to negative you have to meet a zero first all right we have to meet a zero between negative eight and positive five there is a zero that lies between positive one and negative four there is a zero that lies between negative three and a ten and the value of x that corresponds to that zero is our root okay now, part A said, we show that the roots of this equation here lie in the range there. This is a polynomial of degree 3. So, we are supposed to have 3 roots. Now, since there are 3 uh, locations where we can find the root, yes, that means all the roots are lying within the range negative 3. And positive three so that has been part part b they want us to use linear interpolation once find the negative root of the equation now the negative root is a root that lies between negative three and negative so i'm going to extract out this part here the part that will give us the negative root put it in mind that x is called a root only if fx is equal to zero so let me extract this here so here we have our x we have fx we are interested in a negative root since there is sign change here a zero is lying there so this side we have negative eight we have five what are the corresponding values of the corresponding value of five is negative two here the corresponding value of negative eight is negative three here and the one that corresponds to the value of x here which corresponds to this is what we need i can call it alpha I can call it alpha we need to find that alpha and it will be the root which we are interested in so again using linear interpolation you have a b c gradient a b is equal to gradient s uh, let's start getting the gradients uh, gradient a b this is 0 minus negative 8 divided by alpha minus negative 3 is equal to gradient s 
A is here, C is here. So this is 5 minus negative 8 divided by, this is negative 2 minus negative 3. So this will give us 8 divided by alpha plus 3. This and that we shall have to get 13 divided by here 1. Cross multiplying, we shall have 13 alpha plus 39 gives us 8. So alpha is equal to negative 2.38 when you cross on the calculator 4, 6. This is the 4 dps. They did not specify. And that's the negative root when we use linear interpolation once. So our second example is here, locate the negative root of the equation x power 3 minus 3 x plus 4 equal to 0. Using linear interpolation 1, find an approximation of the root. Now, here you can see the range within which the root lies is not given. So what do we do? We are going to use what they call try and error. So before we do that, let's do this solution. Let fx be equal to zero. So if fx equal to zero and this function is also equal to zero, that means fx is equal to this function and everything is equal to zero. 3x plus 4. Now we are going to use the try and error method. Remember, we are interested in the negative root. That means we are going to check on the values of x which are negative. There is no need of going to the positive domain. No. So we are going to start. Since we need a positive, since we need a negative root, since we need a negative root, x is having elements like 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, they continue. That is it. So we are going to pick on these to test where the root lies. And we have to put in mind the sign change. So let's start. F, F of 0, put here 0. This is going to be 0 power 3 minus 0 plus 4. This is positive 4. F of negative 1. This is the same as negative 1 minus or plus 3 plus 4, which is giving us a positive 6. F of negative 2. Don't lose hope. This is a try and error method. Provided we achieve the first result, that's enough. Okay. So f of negative 2, when you put it there, this is going to be negative 8 plus 6 plus a 4. When you happen to add, we are going to get a positive. We don't lose hope. We go to f of negative 3. This is the same as negative 27 plus 3 times 3 get 9 plus a 4 and this gives us negative 14 when you happen to add so here you can see that there is a sign change so since since f of negative 2 times f of negative 3 which is equal to negative 2 times 14 which is equal to positive 2 times negative 14, giving us negative 28 less than 0. Then there exists a root between negative 2 and negative 3. So now we have known where the root lies. The root lies between negative 2 and negative 3. So if our root is alpha, if we say uh, let our root be alpha, this means that if alpha is a root, this means that f of alpha is going to be equal to zero. So let me now represent this on the extract. Now I have x and we have seen that our root lies between negative 2 and negative 3. The corresponding value for f negative 2 is a 2, positive. Corresponding value for f negative 3 is negative 14. 
Now, we are saying that if alpha is the root, alpha is the root, then corresponding f of alpha should be 0 in order for it to qualify to be a root. So here, we again use linear interpolation the way we saw in the first example. The way we saw here in the first example, these are the very steps that we are following up. So next, gradient AB is equal to gradient AC. So we are going, our A is here, our B is here, so we shall have 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, divided by alpha minus negative 2. This gives us gradient AC, AC. So we have negative 14, minus positive 2 divided by we got negative 3 minus negative 2 so uh, here when you simplify this is negative 2 over alpha plus 2 giving us negative 16 over negative 1 so cross multiplying there we shall end up with the alpha being equal to negative 2.125 and that is our alpha when we use linear interpolation one next is an example theory which looks at how to show that a root lies between a given range so the question is the equation x power 4 the equation x power 4 minus 12 x power 3 plus 12 equal to 0 show that it has a root between x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 and hence using linear interpolation once find the root solution here the steps of the starting are the same almost we now select fx be equal to zero so if fx equal to zero this means that the fx is as well equal to this equation there x power 4 minus 12 x power 3 plus 12 now they need us to show that it has a root between x equal to 1 there is a root that is seated between x x equal to 1 and 2 so we are going to use sign change here so we are going to have f we are going to evaluate this function at 1 so we have f1 which is equal to 1 power 4 substituting here minus 12 times 1 power 3 plus 12. so when you simplify this f of 1 is going to give us a positive 1 we are done with evaluating our function at x equal to 1 let's evaluate our function at x equal to 2 put here 2 this is 2 power 4 which gives us 16 minus 12 times 2 power 3 is 8 plus so when you simplify there we shall have to get negative 68 so by sign change since f of 1 times f of 2 is equal to 1 times negative 68 which is equal to negative 68 being less than 0 then have a root that exists between 1 and 2. So uh, we have now shown that it has a root between 1 and 2 using sign change method. Next, they need us to use the linear interpolation once. Find the root to do the small places. Now, a root only exists. A root is a value of x, mm? which when you evaluate the function at that value of x, you will get 0. So I can say let my root to be alpha. This means that f alpha should be equal to 0. Now let me extract my information. So here I have x, fx. Values of x, we have 1, 
What is the corresponding value for 1? Corresponding value for 1 is 1. Corresponding value for 2 is negative 68. Corresponding value for alpha, if alpha has to be a root, then the corresponding value there is 0. Again, I call this A, B, C. Gradient between A, B is equal to gradient between A and C. Next, we now uh, follow the simple steps which you have been following. So, gradient A, B, I have now 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1 divided by alpha minus 1, giving us negative 68 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. So, this is negative 1 divided by alpha minus 1, giving us uh, negative 69 divided by yes to minus one divided by one so when we cross multiply there we are going to have negative 69 alpha plus 69 giving us negative one so alpha is equal to 70 all over 69 and that's our alpha when you press on the calculator you will get alpha as being equal to 1.01 they say that to 2 number one try question locate where the positive root of the equation x power 3 minus 3 x minus 12 equal to 0 lies. Hence, use linear interpolation once, find the root. Second number, show that the root of the equation x power 3 minus 3 x minus 12 equal to 0 x power 3 plus x minus 2 equal to 0 lies between 0 and 2. Use linear interpolation once to find the root to be this. The third number, just yes, call show that the equation 2x power 3 minus 18 over x plus 2 equal to 0 has two real roots. The interval negative 3 means so these are our three questions that we have to look at. Stay with me. Uh, in the next video, we are going to look at how to deal with trigonometrical functions here in numerical. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell a friend about this channel. Keep sharing. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for being part of my audience.